sermon today is interwoven with a question. Our Lord says in the text, he says, um, church at Ephesus, you, you do have something going on that I do want to commend you for. And, and I love our Lord's style, you know. Uh, I try to adopt that when I'm dealing with people, um, especially those who work for me or anyone you know, I may point out what's wrong, but I also like to point out what's right. You know, you, you, you carry that in a stick. If I'm going to rebuke you or correct you for something that you didn't get right, I think you ought to acknowledge what a person has done right. Amen. If they give you something to acknowledge. And so uh, the Lord pointed out where the church at Ephesus had went wrong, but he wanted to make sure that he didn't, he didn't leave out any commendation that was that they were deserving uh, deserving of and so he says this you have that thou hatest the doctrine um, or the deeds of the Nicolaitans so my, my question today is do we hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans you know um, would the Lord say uh, this about us. Up room, I want to praise you for a lot of things you've gotten right. I want to point out the things you've gotten wrong. But one thing I do want to say, you do hate something that I hate. And that is the deeds of the Nicolaitans. And you know, it's always right to hate what God hates. And to love what God loves. So you're in trouble when you love what God hates and you hate what God loves. See, I love church. Brother Jackson, we're so glad to have you, man. You're looking good today. Love church because Jesus loves it. Did I call your name right, Jackson? Good to see you. Jesus loves church. The Bible says, not forsaking the assemblings of yourselves together. All who love the Lord attend church. Amen. I love the Lord, but I can just have church at home. No, you can't. You can have church at home when your church is not in session. But when your church is in session, you need to be at church. Unless you're sick, you should be at church. Or working, you should be at church. You don't want to be in rebellion. You should be at church. One man got blessed, and David said to the Lord, I love thine house. You should love what God loves. So, Question is, do we hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans? I guess before we answer uh, that question, the question should be, who are the Nicolaitans? And, and what is the deed? What are the deeds or the doctrines of the Nicolaitans? Who were these people whose behavior uh, both our Lord and the church found repugnant? Amen. A behavior that our Lord and the church found repugnant. We see behavior today that the Bible clearly speaks about where churches are welcoming and affirming that which God calls an abomination. God calls homosexuality in, all, in every form an abomination. You got churches now who say we are tolerant and we are diverse. And we just welcome and love everybody and everything. But God calls it an abomination. Amen. And last time I checked, God hadn't changed his mind. It's still an abomination. The Bible hadn't changed. Say amen. So uh, the question is, who were these people? And what was their doctrine? Both our Lord and the church at Ephesus held the deeds of the Nicolaitans in contempt. I think it's worth noting that the Lord did not hate the Nicolaitans, nor did the people at Ephesus hate the Nicolaitans. They 
hated their deeds. See, there is a difference between the person and their behavior. I do not hate white supremacists. I hate white supremacy. So you can't hate the people. You have to hate the behavior. For if you hate the people, now you've, you have fallen. See, the Bible says, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. See, if the Bible teaches, if you love them that love, that love you, you really haven't done anything. You grow when you love them who hate you. But you, it is right to hate the sin, but love the sinner. See, you know that you've been fighting too long when we, if we go to the clinic and we hate the escorts. That's why many of us have shown up and, and learned their names and we speak to them. Hey, miss you. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> they don't know how to take it. <laughs> because we, yeah, we don't hate them. We hate what they're doing. We hate what they represent. The moment your hate goes from the behavior to the person, it's time to come pull off the line. Leave the, leave the battlefield for a while. Let God restore you. Praise the Lord. Let him purge you. You have to do it now. And then, then you're ready to go fight again. Someone said to me one time, you know, uh, Pastor Wooden can't stand a sissy. He hates them homosexuals. I said to the man, man, you misunderstood me. I didn't know you felt that way. That's not my position. That's not my position at all. I don't hate any homosexual. I hate with a perfect hatred. David says, hate with a perfect hatred, homosexuality right. or lesbianism, but not the person. The person is for whom Christ died. Yeah. Amen. So you have to differentiate. You have to keep that distance. And, and the difference, this is not a nuanced difference. This is not a difference in semantics. This difference is not a uh, a narrow difference. This difference is a superhighway. It's, it's, it's Venus and Mars. They're worlds apart. And as a believer, you have to be able to separate a person from their deeds. Praise the Lord. Parents love their children. We don't always love what they do. We always love the decisions they make. But you love them. You have to be careful when you say, well, I'm going to stand by them no matter what. Well, you, you stand by them. You can love them, but you don't stand by wrong decisions. So you, you can't do that now. Well, I don't think, what's wrong with it? It's what's wrong with it. You, you thought that sin, it was, it was just wrong. It was just wrong to commit certain sins till your daughter committed it. Then all of a sudden, well, you know, I think that, you know, we shouldn't judge people. No, 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 no. If they've done wrong, they've done wrong. They've done wrong. You're not judging them. You're making a judgment. Your child robbed a bank and someone calls your child a bank robber. You can't get mad because they call your child a bank robber if the child robbed a bank. You know what you call a person who robs a bank? A bank robber. Amen. I don't see what's wrong with robbing banks. These banks ain't right no way. Banks take people money, and these banks, they won't give you loans. And you know all these banks, these banks make me sick. All these banks. Oh, you've messed up. You've messed up. So you crossed over the line. No, banks, are the, they are what they've been being. They are, they are what they've always been. They are what they were when they gave you that loan that you are two months behind on. Amen. The deeds, so that it's worth noting that it was the deeds of the Nicolaitans that our Lord hated and not the Nicolaitans themselves. It was their deeds that our Lord held in contempt. It was our deed, it was their deeds uh, that the Lord found to be a botcheristic and diabolical. Because the church at Ephesus, I want to mention this, did not tolerate the Nicolaitans, but hated their teachings and behavior, 
the Lord commended them. <laughs> Saints, they were commended for being intolerant. Now, isn't that a twist? Because the new thing today is tolerance. You know, America is telling us today to tolerate everybody and everything except Christians. Now, Christians, we don't tolerate you. I was listening to uh, Durant, uh, Kevin Durant, fine basketball player. Durant said the other day that, uh, so I guess someone asked him the question. They had Kevin Durant Day uh, in the D.C. area. He's a hometown hero. They're proud of him. Fine young man. He can, re he can really play basketball. Uh, but they asked him if he would, if the team got the invitation, which the invitation has not been extended, so it's a moot point until it has been, but if it was, would he visit the White House? And his answer was he would not because he doesn't have, uh, he doesn't agree with the person who's in it, and he, in the White House, and he doesn't agree with his belief so that he, he would not. And, you know, when you, when you make a statement like that, then you, um, um, you, if you make it based on agreement and beliefs, then people, thinking people, then, you know, check your own beliefs and agreement. So I wondered, well, that's, that's, that's okay. You, what's fine with me, I don't care whether you go to the White House or not. But if his reasons are, I don't agree with the person who's in there. But you play for the Warriors. Uh, a team whose owner was the leading voice in getting the all-star game moved from Raleigh, because, from Charlotte, because of HB2. Because in North Carolina, we believe that a man should go to the men's room and a woman should go to the women's room and that a man who has a dress but has male plumbing shouldn't be in the bathroom with women. That HB2, the, the, the number one opponent of it was the owner of the Warriors. The, on, the Warriors owner, the Warriors general manager, we're talking about beliefs, is married to a man. Okay, now we're talking about beliefs. So I'm not going to go because I don't believe what he believes. So when you, when you make it on beliefs, then you, you wonder how far does that go. So, and Kevin Durant is a self-professed Christian. So, all right, so... You know, your beliefs allow for you to do that. And I'm still going down the line. Mark Jackson, the head coach of the Warriors, who built that team. But the Warriors let Mark Jackson go. You know what the Warriors' problem with Mark Jackson was? Mark was too Christian. And Mark said, uh, when one of the homosexuals came out, Mark said there would be no place for homosexuality in his locker room. And Mark Jackson, a black man, would not take down. Well, the Warriors fired Mark Jackson. They had a winning record under Mark Jackson. It was Mark Jackson got, who got Curry, the, 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 uh, Clay. Mark put that team together. And they fired the black guy and hired Steve Kerr. Praise the Lord. And... And now it's cursed team. Now, it's amazing to me that the, uh, the lack of consistency because if, if, if your beliefs won't let you go and visit the White House because you disagree with something that the, uh, the, the current president have said, uh, then most certainly as a Christian and, and as a black man, you would think that your beliefs wouldn't let you play for the team. I, I'm not going to even bring up that, that, that you know, the year before you came, that's the same team that beat you in the playoffs when you were playing for Oklahoma. So I guess your position was, if you can't beat them, join them. So you leave Oklahoma and join the team that, you, that just beat you. So, so you get on a winning team that's already a winning team. Praise the Lord. You, you're 6'11 with a 7 foot plus wingspan. So you go join a team that's already a winning team and you win a championship. Bravo. But, but that's some kind, that's a disconnect. Uh, LeBron James said that, you know, he has a problem playing now for Cleveland because Dan Gilbert, you know, gave money to Trump. But you, you supported Hillary, who supports Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood kills more blacks every two weeks 
than the Klan has in its entire history. So how is it that you can support someone who received the Margaret Sanger Award? Hillary did, and, and, and if, if you know anything about history, one of the Klan's favorite guest speakers to invite to preach for them was Margaret Sanger. They loved her preaching. <laughs> I, understand, I understand why you're quiet. <laughs> I, I understand it. Uh, I'm going to preach in just a minute. But, but the, 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 so how, how is it, uh, uh, brother, uh, uh, King James, uh, that uh, you, you could campaign for a lady who support policies that disproportionately affects your race that target us, you know, Planned Parenthood doesn't put blacks in jail and they get out sooner or later. The Planned Parenthood gets through it, you, you're dead. And all of the babies, all of them are innocent. And uh, more blacks die as a result of Planned Parenthood and abortion and all of the, the, the five leading com causes of death combined. Nothing is wiping us out like abortion. So how is it that we can support that? And, and Margaret Sanger was uh, a big uh, guest speaker for the Klan, but you're upset with President Trump. Now, that you may be upset with any president, that is your right. There's nothing wrong with that. If you don't agree with what a man says, you have a right to um, feel any way you want. But that ought to at least, for the sake of those of us who do our homework, and those of us who are not emotional, but we're a little more intellectual, and we think, you know, those of us who think about stuff, you ought to at least show a measure of consistency so that your reasoning, your reasons will make sense. Say amen. amen. So let me get back to this. Amen. They got Commended. Rocky don't go far. They got commended because they were intolerant. They didn't tolerate the Nicolaitans. The church at Pergamos was a tolerant church. They permitted the Nicolaitans, also called the Balaamites. Not Balaamites, but Balaamites. B-A-L-A-A-M-I-T-E-S, uh, as in Balaam, the Balaamites, to operate in their church. Amen. If you look at Revelations 2 and 14, talking to the church at Pergamos, he says, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. To eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Look at this. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, and the Lord happens to mention it again, which thing I hate. So the church at Pergamos was a, a church of diversity. An intolerant church. Praise the Lord. Whatever you want to do. It's all right with we Pergamites. Praise the Lord. You can do what you will. And we, we operate uh, like the Balaamites. And our Lord tells us how he really feels about them again. He says, I hate that doctrine. Now let's look at the doctrine. Are you with me? Before we deal with the doctrine, let's deal just a little bit with the founder 
of uh, the Nicolaitans. Uh, the founder, and there's very little known about this heretical sect uh, that operated within the church. The, 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 the Nicolaitans was alive and well in the early church. So they operated within the church. This was not a church outside of the body of Christ. The Nicolaitans operated within the church. So that's the problem. Their founder was said to be Nicholas from Antioch. A convert to Judaism. He was one of the first. He was one of the first. He was one of the first seven deacons. Isn't it amazing? Where division can come from. It's amazing where Satan, how Satan can rear his head. The late great Bishop G. E. Patterson said this. He said, the seed to any movement that is started are planted in it in the day of its conception. The mechanism to die is with us the day that we're born. Can I get a witness? So, so Nicholas, Acts uh, chapter 6, verse 5, mentions these men. Because you remember in the 6th chapter of the Acts, of the apostles, there was a problem. Verse 1 says, In those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring. See? Well, I'm going to leave this church because uh, there, there, there are problems and there, there are complainings. Well, in the first church, there were murmurings. Anywhere there are people, there are going to be murmurings. And he says, uh, For the Grecian Grecian here is literally speaking of Jews. Now, we went over this in 8 o'clock class. The, the, the Grecians were not Greeks here, but Jews who were Hellenized. See, there was two groups of Jews. They were the Hellenized Jews and the Hebraic Jews. The Hebraic Jews were the Jews who spake the ancient Hebrew language. The Hellenized Jews were Jews who spake Greek. To be Hellenized, Hellenized means to become Greek speaking. Amen. You are uh, learned uh, Greek learning. The, the, the Hellenized Jew was the Jew who was not as dedicated to the law and practices uh, of uh, ancient Judaism like the Hebraic Jews. And so when the church first started, Jews got saved. And there basically were two groups of Jews. The Hellenized Jews, called Grecians, and the Hebraic Jews. And uh, they got along, and they didn't get along. Their culture was different, and they had to work together. And so you got in the early church the Hebraic Jew, the Hellenized Jew, and the Gentile. The Gentile had no uh, Judaism in their past at all. <laughs> so you have all these diverse groups. See, the Lord's been putting people together for a long time. Under the same banner, and a problem broke out. In those days when the numbers of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a complaining. There arose complaining. King James says, a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. That is, the Hellenized Jews were accusing the Hebraic Jews of something. Because their widows, the Hellenized Jews whose husbands were dead, were neglected in the daily administration. That is, as the Hebraic Jews were passing out the food. The complaint was that the uh, Hellenized Jews were not, uh, these widows were not being fed right. So to solve the problem, 
the apostle says to them, first of all, it's not good for me to have to leave the word of God and serve tables. I'm no waiter, Peter said. So we're going to choose out seven men. You choose out seven men among you filled with the Holy Ghost and let them deal with this conflict. Verse 5 gives us uh, these men. It says, and saying, and the saying pleased the whole multitude. Everybody in the church, all of the Grecians were satisfied. The Hebraics were satisfied. And they chose, and, and, and re- listen, actually what was so kind of Peter here to show his concern, uh, the whole multitude that uh, he was talking to, he was actually talking to the people who made the complaint. So he told the Hellenized Jews, you get seven men. You, you get seven men to work with this. Since you feel that your people are being mistreated. He didn't deny that they were. He didn't affirm that they, confirm that they were. He said, you get seven men to deal with this. Are you following me? And of the seven, that was Stephen. It says this about Stephen, a man full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Philip, Prochorus, and look at this. Nicanor and Timon and uh, Parmenas, Parmenas, excuse me, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Couple of things. All of the men that were mentioned, all but one were Jews, but they all were Hellenized because all of them had Greek names. So he picks. Hellenized men to deal with the Hellenized widows being overlooked. But an interesting footnote is that Mark, uh, uh, that, that Luke, the writer, adds is that one of the men, Nicholas, was not a Hebraic Jew. He was not a Hellenized Jew. He was not a Jew at all. He was a Gentile. Hence, that he was called a proselyte from Antioch. A proselyte is a Gentile who has accepted Judaism and he is learning, he is letting go of his Gentile culture and he's taking on the teachings and the ways of Judaism. In Christianity, you're not required to be a proselyte. In Christianity, we don't make proselytes, we make disciples. But in Judaism, you had to become a proselyte. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day.